Hi, this is Jens from Leveled Up, and uh, today we're bringing you a gameplay slash dual commentary. Uh, the game that we're going to play is Metal Gear Solid Five Ground Zeroes, and my host, because I'm in his house, uh, is Emmanuel Vercresa. Hi, Emmanuel. Hi, Jens. Nice to see you again. Um, people who have listened to the radio show might uh, recognize your voice. You were one of our guests. I think it was the first season, was it? Uh, I can't even remember. Possible, yes. But you I have been so old, I don't remember. Yeah, <laughs> you have been a guest on the show before. And um, but the reason that I, I uh, contacted you is because you review video games. Yeah, that's true. I write reviews for OPM, the official PlayStation magazine in the Benelux, uh, and Invader magazine, which is a digital one. Okay, and um, so I wanted to feel you out a little on what it's like reviewing video games for a living, more or less. <laughs> More or less. <laughs> and uh, whilst playing a pretty cool game, I think, personally. A little on the short side, but hey, we'll, uh, we'll start this one right off. Yep. So Metal Gear Solid 5, have you played it before? Have you reviewed it before? I haven't reviewed it before, but I've played it before. Big Metal Gear Solid fan, so uh, oh. yes, I have it. So am I. <laughs> uh, what's your favorite one in the series? Uh, I'm not going to make myself very popular, but I think the fault one. The, the last one, uh, yeah. Guns of the Patriots? Yeah. Cool. No, I, very, very good. I prefer uh, Snake Eater. I can imagine. The third one. Yeah. It was fantastic. Anyway, uh, moving on. So you review video games. Um, what are the things like this is Hideo, uh, Hideo, Hideo Kojima game is pretty epic from the start, I think. This game is very good cutscene. Um, what do you think, what are you looking for when you start a game? What are the things that you want to be impressed or well, it depends on the game I think if you review this kind of game you indeed want to be impressed you want to see good cutscenes and you want to be sucked into the story and I think well, like you said this is very good cutscene from the start so it immediately gives off the correct tension when you when you have it uh, but of course this is I, I don't know I hope not to spoil anything for anyone but if you have a look at this very short uh, ground zeros then it only has a cutscene in the beginning and at the ending. So, I mean, with uh, Hideo Kojima, you would expect a lot more, but that's all you get, actually. But they are very good. You reviewed Rambo, the video game, and uh, the, you kind of wrote a, a ranty oh, article, I might say, mm -hmm. about the whole concept of um, video games and, you know, movie adaptations for, you know, movies making video games, actually, just to promote the movie. So what was your, your thoughts on that? <laughs> in uh, summary <laughs> uh, well uh, Rambo the video game I mean you could smell it from an hour away it was it sucked monkey balls really <laughs> I, can I say that on, on I'm sure you, you can really god damn it <laughs> so it was very very bad so uh, we me and the editor-in-chief we decided to write an article about uh, movies or video games turned into oh, movies uh, giving off video games and because most of them are actually very very bad so uh, not just that one but uh, actually all of them except for one or two that are good all of them really suck so we thought this has to stop now <laughs> and do you think like how, how much of an influence do you feel that reviewers have in the industry like do you feel that if you write a, a bad review for like, say a series or a developer comes up with a couple of shitty games do you feel like they get the message they get the hint or is it just really like just making money and then if there's enough money to make another game or a sequel to a previous shitty one they'll just make the they'll just make the sequel i think they will just uh, go for the money uh, we've been saying about call of duty for example that it's not an innovative at all we want something new something different but as long as people keep buying it they just keep making it <laughs> so they they keep asking 15 euros or something for for three map packs and just everyone just buys them so who cares? Uh, we say no, they are not creative, they are not... Pff, who cares? People just buy them and they just keep making them. Or like FIFA. I'm sure Travis is a huge fan of FIFA. <laughs> They'll just keep doing the same thing over and over because that sells. If they start something new, it's a risk. So, pretty sure they will just go for the money anyway. It's like movies. If you have a franchise that has sold a million copies before, they will just keep doing the same thing because something new always involves a risk. Well, I'm sorry if it annoys people that we're talking over the um, the intro here, but I'm sure people there's there's other videos on YouTube. Come on, dude. you can fucking or just buy the game. It's just make sure you're not um, you know I don't know how to say this that you're not you know cheaped out of a couple of a couple of bucks because it's not that long 
and that was kind of a, one of the big complaints. I'm, I'm sure you made uh, a similar one that it's uh, maybe a little bit too expensive for, you know, gameplay money wise the ratio between that. Yeah, that's it actually. It's, if you buy a, a game of Metal Gear Solid, you want to be blown away by the story, and if you buy this one and you play it, it's only one uh, mission in the story, and all the rest is just uh, extra ops. So you think, oh, that was at least well, what I thought. You play it for an hour, two hours perhaps, and then you say, oh crap, come on, that's it, there's nothing else. Right. And then you can keep on going, of course, but that's not really why you buy Metal Gear Solid, I think. But it's not bad, of course. You can, it's kind of an open world, so you can keep on playing in it and, and doing stuff in it, but it was a bit too short for me. By the way, if I would uh, be watching your video right now, it would be annoyed to hell because uh, well, we just kept on talking. Yeah, yeah exactly. Song. Exactly. Oh well. Uh, what do you think uh, XOF means, actually? Because we saw it in the, uh, the intro there. Uh, it's a reference to Fox, of course, the former unit of uh, Snake. And I think it's going to be one big conspiracy. Uh, this guy trying to make sure that people think it's the Fox unit involved in something very, very bad. Um, but I, I don't know other than that. It's a Hideo Kojima game, so anything can happen, I think. So when you start a game like this, do you immediately go... Do you kind of feel out the controls first, or do you just head first into the action and then kind of learn as you go? Kept you waiting, huh? Um, I think I would... Well, depends a bit on the game again, but uh, I think I would just fall into the action and just see how it goes. And if I get killed or something, uh, not to worry. But this is a good one, because normally in Metal Gear Solid games, every button has five or six different functions and it's very difficult, but this is actually very easy to, to just do. I hope to, I can do it while while talking all the time. Yes. I'm a man that can focus on The real things. challenge begins now. Um, I think graphically, we've seen the intro movie now. What do you think of, of a game like this graphically? It's very good. I actually played it on PlayStation 4 and it's it's remarkably good and it's the first time I see it on PlayStation 3, but it's, it's still a good game, I think, graphically speaking. PS4 is obviously that little bit heavier, uh, but is there a big difference? Can you tell that it's? If nobody would would have told you that it's PS3, would you would you have noticed? Uh, I think so. Uh, perhaps not the other way around, but um, because I'm used to the PS4 version, it, I saw of course that this was a little bit less. Um, but uh, otherwise, perhaps not. I mean, if I would have been used to the PS3 version and then played PS4 probably would have thought, oh, that's a good television. Yeah. Uh, so first thing I'm going to do is take out the guard. Mm. I have to rethink a bit because I've been playing quite some Metal Gear, Metal Gear Solid uh, on the PS4. Mm -hmm. But of course, this is just the, the first mission, actually. Yeah. And uh, so I'm going to ask him to give me information. The map has been updated. Voila. And now I'm going to take him out. Voila, that's it. You don't kill guards or you try no, not no, to? No, I try not to. I try to do it uh, the real snake way. Oh, <laughs> not like that. <laughs> there we go. <laughs> how, how many minutes are we in there? Yeah. Maybe two minutes, two. that's good. I told you, I can't <laughs> talk and play at the same time. So I normally don't do it like this, I try to sneak, but uh, yes. since I blew it from the first two minutes... <laughs> you can always restart, we can edit this out, nobody yeah, will know. Yeah, no one will know. <laughs> My way of playing is just enjoying the surroundings, yeah. trying to sneak behind cover, doing it the slow way. It's, it's all part of the game, I think, so no, people speeding through levels, I don't... Uh, right. Let's hide a little bit, and then we can really start. How many times do you play a game before you review it? Uh, again, it depends on the game. Uh, some which are story driven really have to go from beginning till end and then backwards sometimes. But others, I mean, if you do the, the latest Call of Duty, for example, the campaign is only eight hours uh, and then a, bit, a little bit of multiplayer and that's it. Uh, I mean, you can do 50 matches of multiplayer, you can do 150, but the feeling stays the same. I did Titanfall, for example, on the Xbox One, uh, which is a very good game, but you immediately feel that it's a good game, even after five matches, so, uh, well, yeah, just try to do so that I have a feeling and I have an impression of something. But sometimes that takes a bit longer, sometimes it's a bit shorter. Yeah. Do you, um, how long are the gaming sessions that you do? Do you, like you said, um, 
Call of Duty is an eight hour campaign, do you sit out the entire eight hours in one sitting or do you kind of do a little bit of a story, then go online and then come back to the story yeah. or what do you do? I do it in different sittings. Uh, I have kids, so... <laughs> <laughs> there you go. I, uh, yeah. I choices we make, people. Yes, yes, yes. So, uh, no. Uh, I, I usually do the testing in the evening when they have gone to sleep. And then it depends a bit. I just try to make sure I know a bit of everything. So I do some campaign, do some multiplayer in between. Uh, and then I go back and I test the entire story. Uh, I test some multiplayer. It depends on, on what kind of game I'm reviewing, actually. That might mean that there's yeah. some behind you. <laughs> Nighty night, sweetheart. <laughs> And there he goes. My problem is I really have no patience, so... Yeah. <laughs> well, the thing is, you, you kind of have to have patience with a game like this. <laughs> Get your ass up! You can now either interrogate him, That's knock him out, cool. or you have to go for the knockout. Yes. <laughs> okay. So, when you play a game like this, do you, or, or any other game, do you read up on it? Do you kind of do your little research there before, or do you kind of go in um, and you have no idea what to expect, or, and just kind of enjoy the ride? No, I would do research first. Um, it depends a bit on, on the game again, but uh, especially for this kind of game, I, I think I would need a bit of background first of all, just to make sure how it's linked with previous games. Just read up on, for example, Peace Walker. I mean, it has been a few years since, since we last reviewed that one. Uh, so I, first I would like to know how exactly things were going, so I really know what to, to look for, what uh, to expect at the story. Uh, especially in this kind of thing, because it's so story-driven, you really cannot miss out on any small detail, because it's really full of references, full of easter eggs, uh, and you miss half of it if you, if you don't know. What are kind of the, um, the, the better games that you've played in the last... The better games? Um, let's say since the beginning of the year. Mm. So we're April now, so four months, maybe not a lot of games, but there have to be mm. some games that... Titanfall really stands out. Mm because that's a very good one. There are some red gems as well, things that are very, very obscure. Not many people play them, like on, on the uh, Vita. Danganronpa, Trigger Happy Havoc. Yeah. Some, some weird Japanese game like Virtue's Last Reward, but very, very good. Very strange. Uh, it's a visual novel, uh, so it's not for everyone, of course, but uh, it's good. Good night. Oh, gee. <laughs> <laughs> of course. Of course. I have to go down that ridge to get the helicopter and to get him out. So I need to clear the path a little bit. <laughs> By shooting. By shooting everything <laughs> and everyone. <laughs> Again, this is not the correct way to play this game. No, it's not. So don't do it like this. I kind of wanted to like, why is he, why is he picking up that card? 
did he have a, a human shield kind of a strategy thing yes. going on? That was exactly what I was thinking. Yes, it happens. Um, <laughs> this is what happens when you try to review a game and play it at the same time. Yeah, it's uh, difficult to focus attention on two things. Uh oh. Should have put him to sleep, I think. He's kind of to sleep. In permanent sleep. <laughs> Do you, have you ever played a game and then quit? Because it was Roger so bad, yeah. you kind of went, you know, I can write this review. It's not going to be a good one, but I quit. I can't play this any longer. I had that with the Rambo the video game, which was so very bad. It was an on-rail shooter. I mean, can you imagine something of the 80s? Mm -hmm. You're in a shooter, you just have to duck away, and then you have to shoot something. But it doesn't matter how you shoot it. If you shoot it in the leg or in the head, they just keep falling and dying. Uh, so it was very very bad and then I, I just I thought no fuck it I'm not going to do this and then I did it again and then I wrote <laughs> you did it anyway I had to do it anyway and, and I wrote an article about movie games uh, and games of movies and movies of games that are so incredibly bad uh, something really has to be done some people have to be shot or at least tortured uh, because it was so very awful preferably in a uh, kind of rail shooter type thing yes <laughs> bolt up their ankles <laughs> On station at LZ. Here we are. Chico is saved, despite me. <laughs> <laughs> despite our best effort, best efforts, Chico is still alive. With the target on the chopper. Wonder, can we actually? Yeah, I think so. I think at this point he says she's dead. So if we take his word for it and we leave, that could end the mission. So we're listening to the tape now. Uh, we just liberated Chico, and I think we can end it here. Uh, if people want to uh, play this game, what would you recommend? Now we play this game for a while. What would you say? You mean in this mission or in general? In, in this mission. That's it. Uh, I would uh, listen to the tape, and you will have to listen and listen again. They will uh, show you some locations, or they will let you listen to some, and then you really have to go around the camp and try to find every location. But again, they take your hand and they really show you, because every time you meet one of those places that might be something for the story, they say, ah, this is place number one, or ah, this is place number two. So it's not so very difficult, of course. And for the game, for people who kind of watched this and kind of are on the fence of, on, on buying the game, do you, I mean, we've talked about it, it's kind of on the short side, but, you know, cutting to brass tacks here, buy or no buy? I would buy it, especially if you're a Metal Gear Solid fan. I mean, it's the introduction to the Phantom Pain, so it, it builds a bit of a bridge between Peace Walker and, and uh, the Phantom Pain. And if you're a Metal Gear Solid fan, I mean, this is good value for money, of course. You only get one story mission, uh, but it's a good one, and you can play and play again. This is like Grand Theft Auto, but then the Metal Gear Solid version, because uh, you saw me play in different ways, good and bad ones. Mm -hmm. But there are so many ways to go about the camp, drive the vehicles, uh, really shoot at stuff, because there are some missions where you have to do that as well. And then really do it the real Metal Gear Solid way and sneak up, which you didn't really see me do much. I just shot people. Okay. <laughs> I guess uh, we can end it here. We, we'll just continue playing. We'll just stop recording, because yeah, we're sure. assholes like that. <laughs> yes. uh, thank you for listening. Thank you, Emmanuel, for uh, having me at your house and talking about uh, this game and reviewing in general and uh, until next time yeah no problem uh, just one question you promised me if you could come over and play you were going to clean up the entire attic so when are you going to start that I'll have to edit this video first <laughs> but um, I'll get on it you'll be back probably. pinky swear yes. pinky <laughs> swear uh, thanks for listening everybody and uh, keep on leveling up <laughs>